Hi there. Uh, today we are looking at another Master GMAT critical reasoning question. And of course, if you want to give it a try, you can do so by pausing the recording and then unpausing it when you're ready to listen to the explanations and to see the answer, of course. So go ahead and pause the recording now. Okay, so let's go over this together. Um, what are we looking for in a critical reasoning question? Well, obviously the first thing we do is we have to determine what kind of question it is. That's the first step in our work order. So based, of course, on the question stem, we see it says in the argument, given the two portions of the bold face play, which of the following roles? We can obviously see it on, from the actual passage too. Um, what we're trying to determine is what the two bold face uh, portions relationship is over here uh, to themselves and uh, within the whole. So what do we need to do? First thing we need to do is to break down the argument into its component parts of uh, premise or premises, conclusions, assumptions. Um, usually here we're dealing with premises and conclusions. And so you need to break those down sentence by sentence and then especially look at the bold face type questions and then you basically try to see, you know, which direction it, it's going to go in based on that. So, uh, basically, what are we doing? First sentence, we see right away that this is a premise. It's just fact, general fact. Second sentence, or first bold face, what is this? Well, over here we have a premise as well. However, pay attention to the word however. Opposition conjunctions are very, very, very important. Okay, you need to pay attention to opposition conjunctions uh, simply because they tend to negate something and change things around. Okay, so we have to uh, pay attention to that opposition conjunction, which basically uh, shows us an exception to the rule. Right? And that's presented in sentence one. Then we go on to the next sex, uh, sentence over here, at least the first part of the next sentence, and we see that um, this is the professor's conclusion. How do we know this? It says, based on this. When we use the words based on this, we know that it's a conclusion based on something that was previously said. So we have based on this, which is a conclusion of what the professor actually thinks, i.e. that uh, he or she is qualified. Now, the last half of that sentence, which is the second boldface, is what? Now, this is kind of tricky over here. The rest of the sentence... Um, basically follows the opposition word but, meaning that it adds new information that contradicts the conclusion. It could be referred to as a counter-conclusion made by the teachers or an undermining premise. However, notice that while this is an opinion, it does not rely on previous information like the professor's conclusion. Rather, it provides new information on the professor's level of expertise. So really, it acts more like a premise. But the important thing is to notice, of course, the word but over here, okay, which obviously contradicts what just came before. So based on this, we are armed to look at the answer choices. Now, what are we looking at over here? In the answer choices themselves, we're looking at A. You see how it says the first is a piece of evidence which enhances a prior piece of evidence. In fact, it does not do so. We can eliminate this answer choice. Why? Well, let's just click on this just to see. This is our time awareness tool, of course which over time makes you super aware of how long it takes you to answer each question. Totally helpful in your timing strategy when you're at the end of your um, training for the GMAT. Click on OK. We obviously have a nice breakdown of what's going on over here. And there's a nice explanation at the end that says that the opposition word itself basically tells us that this is a wrongful answer. Why? Well, let's go back to it over here. Right? The first is a piece of evidence which enhances a prior piece of evidence. If it's an opposition conjunction, it cannot enhance anything. It can contradict it, but it doesn't enhance. And that's why this is wrong. Now, look how nice this is. We get to try again. We didn't just give you the answer. Of course not. We let you try again. This is actually blotted out for now. 
So we could eliminate answer choice A. In answer choice B, we see the first is a piece of evidence which limits the generality of a prior piece of evidence. Well, actually, this is certainly true because um, since it's an exception, since you see over here, however, outstanding professors are sometimes promoted, this is an exception. And an exception can certainly, certainly limit the gem generality of the rule. So the first part is true. The second is a piece of information which challenges the conclusion of the argument. Absolutely. We see over here that the general opinion is that the professor is actually not qualified to do so. Doesn't fit in to the exception to the rule. So, so far so good with answer choice B or answer choice 2. In this part, in C, the first is fine. The first is a piece of information which is an exception to the rule set in a previous piece of information. That's fine, as we discussed. The second is an assumption. No way. It's not an assumption. We know that it's new information. It's definitely not an assumption. We can get rid of this right away. In D, the first is a piece of information which underlines a previous piece of evidence. Again, we can eliminate this right away based on this first part. We don't even need to read this, the second part of this answer choice. Why? Because it doesn't underline a previous piece of evidence. It contradicts it because of what? Of course, going back to the question, the opposition conjunction here. So we could get rid of D and E. The first is a piece of information which limits the scope of a previous piece of information. Okay, it does so because we have the exception to the rule, of course. The second is a piece of information which enhances the first. Again, we have our opposition conjunction but over here. If we have our opposition conjunction but, it doesn't enhance anything whatsoever. It actually opposes it. So we could get rid of D. Definitely our best answer choice is all the way up here. Click on that. We get our correct and, of course, a very nice and concise explanation. And that's it. That's how we actually attack this particular question. So until next time with another critical reasoning question. See you then.